Okay, so sub Q injections, IM injections. Uh, we'll actually be doing IM injections into the orange, but epinephrine that we teach you, you know, like for an allergic reaction, is given sub Q, subcutaneous under the fat cells. So this is what we're sort of looking at, and I believe we went over a lot of this already before when we, uh, I don't know what we were doing, but I do remember going over some of it, but the routes, so medication routes, the route is dependent, or the, the onset of the medication is dependent upon the route taken. If you take an OTC, over-the-counter medication, like an oral medication, it takes about 10, 20 minutes uh, to actually start working. If you want to accelerate that, then you would have some caffeine with it. Uh, caffeine, and uh, I should look these up probably up before we look, but it causes a synergistic effect to oral medications, means it makes it work faster. Okay? Synergistic, and then you have potentiation, and potentiation in a medication is to make it where the effects are more, okay? So the, uh, I'll give you an example. So if a patient has pain and they take an analgesic like morphine, okay? And they take, because all analgesics makes the patients a little nauseated, so if they take morphine, they usually give them an anti-nausea medication or an anti-medic so they don't get nauseated and throw up. So they give them sometimes a medication called Finnergan or Promethazine. And Promethazine potentiates the effects of morphine. It means it's going to just, simple terms, it's, it's just going to add some effect to it, okay? But caffeine always has a synergistic effect with oral medication. Okay. So anyhow, so let's look at this. So we have very fast IV. So if you give medication IV, the onset of that medication is going to be very fast. Okay, it's instantly into the bloodstream, gets picked up by the heart, circulated uh, very quickly to the to the proper receptor sites or the proper tissue. Okay, wherever it might be going. I am intramuscular, intramuscular. Okay, uh, it's slow in onset, but lasts longer. So it's slow in onset, but it lasts longer. It has longer lasting effects. So if you want something to, to last out over a period of time, maybe like an antibiotic or an allergy shot or something like that, you give it IM, intramuscular. It has longer lasting effects. It's stored in that big muscle group. Uh, I am mus uh, intramuscular is usually in the big meaty portions. Sometimes more meaty than others, right? You get it in the hip, the butt. So the, uh, or thigh. Thigh is unusual, but most time people get uh, intramuscular injections in the butt because there's, there's more muscle there, okay, to absorb the amount of fluid that's being injected. Okay, that's where the difference is. It's the amount of fluid that's being injected. A small muscle like a deltoid can't really take more than a cc or so. Now don't don't quote me on the numbers. They're, they're not very important at this point in time. Okay, but really about a, uh, maybe not even a cc. Just a very little amount of medication can go into a small muscle like a deltoid shoulder. Okay. So you want a large muscle group for an IM. I'll look those numbers up because there are numbers. Uh, if someone wants to Google that for me, like how, m how many CCs can go into a, a deltoid or a small muscle. Go ahead. Uh, because there are limitations for small muscles and large muscles so the, of injection. Okay. So the uh, sub Q sub Q injection can't see the M there, but it's a sort of a medium, not really all that medical term, right? But it's sort of a medium paced, you know, uh, onset depending on the circumstances. 
depending on the, the, um, the condition that you're giving it. Sub Q would be the epinephrine that we've talked about that you're giving an allergic reaction. Uh, a, a lot of different medications they, they give sub Q, subcutaneous. Then you have IO, which is intraosseous, and that's into the bone. We'll, we'll talk about that later. You get a bone, bone needle. Uh, they talked about, did we talk about the easy IOs already where they drill? Okay. So intraosseous. This is a fast onset. I first-hand experience is I think that the uh, just personal opinion. They say all the data shows a lot of the data shows that it's just as fast as IV because of the amount of vessels that are in the bone. Okay. Uh, I was giving Narcan to an overdose patient, and I don't really believe it was fast as IV. Okay, because of all the vomit that was on the top of my roof in the ambulance. But uh, they do say it's as fast. And then very slow is intradermal. That's the, your TB shots that you got. It goes just right up underneath the dermis of, of the skin. So whatever, these are the routes of medication that you might give. There is one other route that we haven't really talked about is uh, the patch. And I'm having an old moment. I can't even remember what the, the through the skin. It absorbs through the skin. Somebody help me out here. Dermal patch, but it absorbs through the skin. Okay. They have nitro at patches. Okay. Uh, pain medication, sometimes they have a patch on there that the, it just releases the medication very slow. It's a very slow absorption over a long period of time. It said, um, it said D, D for it up to two cc's depending on the patient's size, but the limit like is one cc. The limit in the deltoid? Mm -hmm. One cc, okay. Not as soon as I thought. But yeah, one, one cc, and that's the upper limit. You know, uh, so I was taking a pain medicine one time. I had some sort of weird neck thing that, man, I never want again. But the, uh, uh, I, I got a medication called Tordol. And it was only like one cc or so. And uh, I was really tired. I just got off work. And uh, I had no problem dropping my pants and getting shot in the butt. But for some reason, I didn't want to do it that day. And I said, just give it my deltoid. I'm so tired. And she, the nurse like, ah, that's a lot in the deltoid. And you know what? She was right. Because <laughs> that dog hurt. So from now on, it's like, here. Here you go. Because uh, that, that was very painful in the deltoid. I took it like a man, but it was very painful. Okay? Painful as in like afterwards or like while she was putting it in? Just right after. Oh. And I was like, wow, that was a lot of fluid. Mm. Working those shoulders. Okay. So what we have here, with medication, we have an onset. That's how, that's how fast the patient is going to feel the effects of the medication. Okay. The half-life of the medication is how long it's going to last. All right. So if you have a medication like uh, that we'll learn next six weeks called adenosine or adenocard for... Uh, supraventricular tachycardias, big word today, big word day day, right? SVTs, the, uh, the half-life of that is 15 seconds. So you have to give it a very large vein in order for it to get to the heart to actually work because it has such a short half-life. And then the other factor is absorption. Where would that, where, or metabolism is probably a better word, metabolism. Is it metabolized, metabolized by the liver? Is it metabolized by the kidneys? Okay. So, uh, just talk about it right now. My, I've had a little golf injury on the wrist here, and I feel it every time it gets, there's a cold front coming through. That's because I'm old, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel that. And I put this crazy thing on uh, every uh, time it happens, compress that, tissue and then I take a lot of 
ibuprofen for about a day or two. And uh, hopefully it'll be gone by tomorrow and just plan on golfing, okay? <clears throat> but I know that ibuprofen is metabolized by the kidneys, all right? So you want good renal function with that. If, if I was still hurting right now, I could take two Tylenol to help with the pain because Tylenol is metabolized by the liver. It's two different organs in, that metabolize the disease, so you can offset them as well, okay? Uh, dental procedures, you can do the same thing uh, if you don't want to take a narcotic. So that it works, it works really well. If you have that really bad headache that won't go away, uh, then you can take two Tylenol for the headache and then chase it down with an ibuprofen. One ibuprofen. Okay. So learning a little pharmacology it helps uh, life out a bit. Okay. So when we look at medication. And we're going to focus on epinephrine because this is the medication that uh, one of them that we learned about, right, with allergic reactions. So the dose for that medication is milligrams. It's measured in milligrams. Most medications measured in milligrams. Uh, really, all medication is based on your weight, so it's milligrams per kilogram. What is it? One pound equals... Very good. 2.2 pounds is one kilogram. All right. So you have to have that that conversion because, especially in pediatrics, you want you need to convert that to milligrams per kilogram. So in medicine, we're always measuring kilograms. Uh, thank you, Jimmy Carter, for not going to the metric system, but uh, we should have. We should have went there. You move decimals. It's it's much easier. Okay. So. When you start drawing up a medicine, you want to, what you want to find out is how many cc's or milliliters, they're the same. A cc and a milliliter is the same. Same amount of fluid, okay? This is the amount of fluid that's in there, okay? And then per milligram, milligram is the amount <coughs> of medicine that's in there. So epinephrine... When you look at epinephrine, it is a one-to-one. -one. So it's one milligram to one cc. Okay? So it's very easy to convert. So if I wanted to give one milligram, how many cc's would I draw? One. one. If I want to give 0.5 milligrams, how many cc's? 0.5, right? Yeah. So you, you figure that out. They're not all that way, but a, uh, a lot of the smaller ones are. Okay? Everybody good there so far? So we have milligrams, micrograms, and like in insulin, units. Insulin's measured in units. Okay? Sodium bicarbonate is measured in milli equivalents. So there's different... Uh, what do you call that? You know, the... You have the dose, and then you have the how it's measured, the, the, the measurement of it, okay? So, when we look at the different medicines, they come in these two, the most common ones come in these two type of containers. You have a vial, V-I-A-L, right? Mm -hmm. All right, and back in the day, this was a multi-dose vial. There's 30 milligrams of epinephrine in here. 30 mil there was 30 milliliters or 30 milligrams okay and uh, I found out epinephrine does sort of stain the floor by the way I, I don't know how it does it but it leaves the yellow marks uh, so this back in the day was a multi-dose vial so they would take this or whatever medication they had in a multi-dose vial they would take this they would draw medicine out of it and go put it back on the shelf. And then if another patient came in that needed this, they would go get that, wipe this off with the isopropyl alcohol, the little alcohol pad, do that again, right? Well, we don't do that anymore. We hardly re keep anything, okay? The only reason it would be multi-dose if for the same patient. 
So if Bob was in there and I gave Bob some of this medicine, I could keep this in Bob's room, labeled with Bob's name on it, okay? And then I could take, wipe that off and give Bob some of the same medicine. I would never use this on another patient, even though there's multiple doses in there. So this is a vial. Uh, glass, so uh, with, with glass, when you draw the medicine out of it, uh, you have to push the same amount of air in the in the vial to draw out. I'll show you that in just a minute. It's pressure. Yeah, yeah, because the, because of the pressures in glass. Okay. The other one is an ampule. Okay, and this is very common. And these are usually you use these little small ampules where you're drawing one dose out of it. This is not epinephrine, but it's the same same ampule. Okay. Uh, there's three doses of epinephrine in there because it's one milligram. And we got 0.3 milligrams is the dose, right? Mm -hmm. So there's three doses of epinephrine in there for 33 cents, by the way. The last time I checked, because the, the auto injector is what, $300? So you get three doses for 33 cents. Thank you, pharmaceutical companies. But the. Uh, Anyway, so an ampule, glass ampule. This is a little special. I'll show you in a second. With, with the vial and the ampule, you got an air problem, right? So we'll bring that up in a second. These are also considered ampules, an amp. So if I wanted to use the slang term, I'm going to give an amp a D50, this would be it. Dextrose 50 for what condition? But someone that's unconscious or really altered, start an IV, uh, give them an amp of D50. It's it, it's an ampule. These just screw together. Okay, they got a little lid on both both sides, the barrel and the ampule, and they just screw together. But this is also called an amp. Okay, this is called a pre-filled syringe. Okay, because the medicine's already in there. It's pre-filled. Now you would have to be careful with the dose to make sure that uh, you're given the right right dose. It may be a multiple dose in here, but most pre-filled syringes have one dose in it. Okay, so an ampule, same thing, an amp of bicarb, an amp of D50, pre-filled, just different different things. Okay, so when we look at the syringe, this is a 20 cc syringe. We have different sizes for different doses. You're not going to give this much fluid in any muscle, okay? Look up for IM, would you? So one, one cc for sub Q. We'll get Google's advice on the IM. But when we look at the uh, syringe, we, we have the barrel. This is called the barrel part. It's measured in milliliters or cc's, okay? So we figure out how much fluid that we need based on the milligram. So if we want uh, one milligram of epinephrine, we drop one cc, right? And you wouldn't give it here because this starts at like uh, two. So a big syringe, you wouldn't give a small amount of of medicine, you couldn't, you couldn't really break it down. You couldn't really draw up that little fluid. Right? The plunger, uh, which you push in here, okay. Uh, and then here, this this black part that uh, I should look this stuff up really quick. It looked like the meniscus or something, but. So if I wanted to draw, if I wanted to give 20 milliliters of this fluid here, then I would that at the beginning of that uh, plunger, I would add that black plunger. I would bring that up to 20 milliliters. Okay, everybody good with that? That's that's pretty cut and dry. The different parts, and then you have the different needles that we use to draw up medicine. You can use a big bigger needle. 
But to give a shot, you'd want to use a smaller needle, right? You don't want to get stabbed with an 18 gauge needle for a shot. Ouch, that's like a harpoon. Okay. These I have on here are 19 gauge needles. Oh. Yeah, so anyhow, don't do, do this. Never recap your needle like this, by the way. Okay. But the, uh, the size of needles that we have, and they're like wire, okay? So the, the larger the number, the smaller the needle. Most injections are given with like 21 or 23 gauge uh, needles. They're very small, okay? So they're, they're not going to really hurt that much. Like the needle that you did your D-stitch with was, was like a 31 gauge or something. Very small needle in diameter, okay? The diameter of the needle. They're universal in color. And this goes to the, the next time we get in, uh, we'll, we'll do IVs, okay? They're universal in color. So an 18 gauge is green, and this is international. These colors are international. Everywhere I went and did uh, clinics and stuff, they were international colors, okay? So the needle 18 gauge is green, 20 gauge is pink. There's not a there's a 21 and a 23. They get down in there, okay. But a 20 on an IV catheter, a 22 gauge is blue, and then a 24 gauge is yellow, okay. So those colors are are uh, across the board. Wait, so 21 and 23. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to guess. I'll I'll look later. I am. It says uh, five. Ooh, man, that's a lot. That's a lot, but yeah, it says that's the max. Five. So I am five. That's that's why you want it in the butt, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you, five cc's is a lot of stuff to push. Hope you have cushion back there. But uh, so the needles we draw up with are usually 18, 19, okay? Then we would do the injection with a smaller needle, 21, 27. These, these different, and that's the diameter of the needle that we would draw with, okay? When we go to inject, we want the bevel in up the same way with the IV. We want the beveled in turned up. It's like a little shovel, and this is a picture of the bevel in the needle, right? Looks like a little bit of shovel, right? You can do it beveled down, if you don't like the person or something. Is there more people? But it's going to hurt. It's going to, oh. I mean, they're going to like, whoa, what are you doing there? Oh, are you a student? But bevel up. So the bevel, I just want you to, you'll be able to see it when you when you get your needles, okay? So the bevel up is usually the way that it goes in, especially with an IV catheter, beveled up. Okay. Why does it hurt more? Like, it, just, it just goes in smoother that way. Mm -hmm. It's a, it, it, the, of the shape. Makes a smoother transition. Okay, so let's look at something here for a second. Let me get a different syringe because I want to draw something up. And I'll do this. All right. So I've got a... I don't know exactly what that was. Red. Uh, so I've got my syringe here. We really wish I knew what that was. Okay, uh, so I'm going to draw up. I'm going to draw up two cc's of fluid in here. Okay, so I'm going to stick in here. I'm going to pull my plunger back two cc's. Okay, because in this in this vial, I need to insert two cc's of air first. So carefully stick that in there. Put two cc's of air in, okay? And then I'm going to pull back, not two cc's, let's say two cc's is the desired dose, okay? But when you get your needles, you'd notice there's air at the top of that, right? So you have to take that air out. And the way that you do that, you, you just tap it to get that air bubble up to the top. I and mean, when we're talking big air bubbles, right? I mean, 
you know, so you get that up there to the top, and then you have to push the plunger in to get that air bubble out. So now I have less than two cc, right? And that's common sense, that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So I have less than two cc's, but if I go ahead and give this, so let's say there's 25 milligrams in two cc's, right? Mm -hmm. And I go ahead and give this in this shot, then I'm given less than 25 milligrams. Make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. So if the order was 25 milligrams and it comes in 25 milligrams per two cc's, I don't have two cc's in here. You're not following the order. Yeah, I'm not following the medication order. I'm giving less medication than order. So I usually, what I do is I draw up, like if I know that two cc's is the order, I'll draw up a little bit more. You know, it's like emerald when he's cooking, takes a little salt. They don't really measure that, right? They just go, a little spice, they go, I'm gonna add a little spice. And you always wonder, well, how much? And he just picks up the thing and he goes, bam, right? I mean, you got that? So just a little bit more, bam, got this. All right, so I'm gonna draw that up. And now, I'm gonna tap on my barrel. All right, get, get those bubbles floating up to the top. Then look for that black line and push this up to two cc's. Okay. <coughs> now I have the desired amount of fluid and the desired amount of medication. Now I can give this shot, okay? That good, good for everybody? You didn't put that back with the dots. Okay. The needles, the needles, when you put the needle on, again, don't recap, don't try that at home. It comes like this, right? And on the on the uh, barrel, it, you'll see that there's a thread. You just twist that on there a little bit. Not like gorilla type, but just twist it on there, and then that pulls off. All right? Now, on the ampule, on the ampule, this is, you'll see on the ampule, I'll pass it around, and you'll see that when the ampule is up right, there's medication up here. Okay? I have to get that medication out. Most sane people just shake it once or twice and it pushes it down, blows it down here. Okay? You see crazy ones, they'll get that and they want to do something fancy like <laughs> and it's down there too, right? Like this little softball thing. I don't I don't know, shake it, and the, the medication is, is down there, and there now it's to draw, because if you broke it open, okay, with the medication up there, then you wouldn't get the right amount of medication to administer, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, remember, when you break this open, it's glass, so now it's a sharp. So it can cut you, and then uh, also, uh, it goes in the, to the sharps container after you're finished, because the PCT cleaning that up, it could cut them as well. Okay, so we want to make sure that that takes place. So I'll pass this ampule around. This is Haldol, by the way, and if it was good, we could all take it and feel really good because it's good for uh, psychiatric emergencies, <laughs> psychotic emergencies, okay? Make you really sleepy. Oh, no. Really fast. I'm going to break open some epinephrine here. Epinephrine's the same, same ampule. This is cool. I don't know how who came up with this on the amp. And also, if you want to get the uh, the fluid out of the top of the the ampule, you can just flip it, flick it a little bit. Okay. One thing about this, this is glass, and this has happened to me before. Some of them put like too much glass in between these things so textbook wise you want to get a little four by four and break this open so I broke that open before and lacerated my finger with it right it's like man that's that's tight mm, need more time in the gym mm, right but when you, you snap it you just sort of snap it a little bit like you would uh, you I'm know going to, be to my neck or something just, Right, like you see on TV, that, right? Because this part is thinner down here. This is pretty cool in the sense that 
when you here. So you take the ampule in your hand firmly, and at the neck, once you get that four by four, and snap its little neck. <laughs> wow. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I should have taken those noticed. drugs before class, huh? So see how it comes up? Now this is the sharp end of it. One really cool thing about the ampule is this. Ready? It's just epinephrine. It's good for the hair. Look up, look up, look up at it. Look up at it. Don't be scared. So scared, look up. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, better not. <laughs> it will burn. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah, so they designed this ampule where you can take it upside down and draw out of it. So why would you need a little glass cap on it? But you don't, when you're drawing out of an ampule, you don't insert air. If you insert air, all your medication is going to come out. Okay? So no need to insert air, so I go there. I draw out my medication, okay? And then here. Now there, there's, a di there's more medication in here, okay? But these are not really multi do do Even for the same patient, just go get another ampule, okay? So uh, yeah, it's wasting it, but it's cheap. Of course, they charge the patient five hundred dollars, but it's cheap. Okay, okay, because you told me that, I'm gonna come at them. <laughs> so you can draw it up. You just wouldn't push. You wouldn't put it in. Push it in. When you when you draw up all the medication, you want to make sure that the uh, the glass. Ready? I know. Okay. No, not really. <laughs> Have you checked your blood glucose level lately? Oh. Maybe I can, I. can I have that antipsychotic medication? <laughs> so I push the plunger up here to the desired dose. I tap there to try to get, and you just get the desired dose. Then you would, then you would give the medication. Okay. Do you have a history of diabetes? Maybe I should eat this one. Any family members? No, good. So, let's talk about the procedure a little bit. So, I'm about to give the medication. All right. So, I would take my alcohol. I'm going to teach you the textbook way to do this. And then uh, the real way later. But let's say this is the patient's deltoid. So I take my alcohol swab. I want to clean the area, right? Mm -hmm. So the point where I'm going to inject, I'm taking the alcohol swab and I'm in a circular motion from inside to outside. I'm, I'm cleaning the area, inside to outside. Okay. I look at the uh, swab, good clean orange. No problem. Now my site's good for injection. You wouldn't touch this, just like I did. You wouldn't touch it, now it's not clean anymore, right? It's not aseptic, okay? In reality, what they do is they take it and they go down and turn over and go down, okay? Because if you go from inside out, in, in theory, if you go to here, I'm taking, you know, uh, George the Germ, and I'm taking them around on a little fair, uh, what's that called? A little fair? <laughs> yeah. Merry-go-round. I'm taking them on, woohoo, free ride. And I'm taking them and I'm, I'm doing this. I'm really just sort of whipping it back into my injection site, right? Okay, so doing this. So really, it's here. Turn that over here. Look, it's clean. Because like for an IV on the skin, you want to make sure the skin is clean. The area is clean. Okay. 
a sub Q injection goes in at a 45 degree angle. Right? So you would uh, you want it in the fat, the fatty area, right? Just below the fat. So a sub Q goes in at, at a 45 degree angle. So before you just clean it, you make sure the patient doesn't have any allergies to medication, that you're giving the right medication, that you're giving the, the right route in the right dose, right? So the uh, no allergies, right route, right dose, right medication, okay? Clean the area, pinch up. This is something we can't do to an orange. You, you would pinch up the skin, okay? And then go in at a 45 degree angle. Now what not to do would be this. You pinch, you got it clean, it's, everything's right, bevel side up, and you go, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> you would do it all the way to the hub of this needle right here. Okay? That's what not to do. You don't want to go, hmm. Oh. Because the patient's going to feel that every millimeter oh of that needle going in. They're going, yeah. wow. Okay? If you do it fast the way you're supposed to, most of the time the patient doesn't even feel it. So you. Make sure everything's right, clean it, pinch up the, that part of the, get the fat up, pinch it up, and then boom, all the way to the hub, okay? One motion, all the way to the hub, okay? Like popping a balloon, like the D-stick, one motion, not, right? That's a 45 degree angle. Close enough. And so the, uh, before you give the medication, you would aspirate, you would pull back to make sure that you don't have a, a gross amount of blood. And I mean gross, like, not like, ugh, but gross like a lot. So if you aspirate and there's a lot of blood come back, where are you at? You're in a vein. Okay? Uh, so you would, if you're in a vein, then you would have to pull this back out and start again. No. Right. You don't want to give it IV. <laughs> you can't give it IV. Some medications, if you give IV, it's lethal. Okay? So, uh, if there's a blood there, then you would draw back and no. start over again. Okay? Very highly unlikely on a sub-Q. Okay? Because you're pinching up the fat. Fat doesn't have a lot of vessels in it. Okay? Everybody good with sub-Q? So, for sub-Q, you have to go to the real nub. You always go to the hub. And it has oh. to be now, this is too long of a needle. This yeah, is not an injection oh. needle. The injection needles are, are sized uh, very small oh, okay. in length. That makes sense. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. This is not an injection needle. This Now, this could be an IM needle if it wasn't so large in diameter because it's longer. Okay. But a sub-Q injection is real short. It's, it's like a quarter inch, okay? Because it doesn't want you going into the muscle, all right? Now, some of you are so thin that that quarter inch muscle or that quarter uh, inch in length needle would go into the muscle, okay? So that's why you pinch it up. You, you stay in the subcutaneous area. All right, so I am. Same thing, make sure everything's right, make sure your dose is right, the patient doesn't have any allergies, you have the right medication, you're giving that the right route, the correct route, okay? And then you wouldn't pinch up, you wouldn't pinch, you'd actually pull the skin a little tight, okay? Uh, clean the site the same way, textbook from with the alcohol prep from inside out, all right? At a 90 degree angle, to the hub, aspirate, and administer the medicine. Okay? Pull the needle out, it's gonna bleed a bit, put a little pressure on it, put a band aid on it, you're good. Okay? So I am 90 degree angle, clean it, bevel up, one motion to the hub, 
aspirate, no blood, administer the medication, okay? Pull the needle out, a little pressure, okay, band-aid. We good to the the biggest difference, really the only difference is on the sub Q you pinch the fat up 45 degree angle. I guess that is that close enough for you? No. This geometry over there. Okay. And then uh I M 90 degree angle both to the hub, both aspirate, okay? When you're practicing this, don't give your injections like this. The needles are not really long enough to go through the orange, but can you imagine? Oh. Needle stuck in your hand on the side. Grab it here where you're not going to stick yourself with the needle. Okay? Got it. Is it very good? No, no problems there? <coughs> All right. Let's see what we have here. Let me, <coughs> let me mop this up. Needle size, good, good, routes. Any questions? Okay, so divide into five groups, which you're probably in, right? Here you go. Where's your patients? Interception. Don't you wish the Eagles could have done that? <laughs> here, you guys get in the group here. We we'll have five oranges. Okay. Thank you.